Hey everybody, it's Paul from Screen Writing Scribe. Today we're going to talk about Story Architect versus Fade In. Two softwares that I re really like. Uh, if you look at my uh, favorite softwares for 2025, which I'll post up here in a card, you can uh, take a look and see that both of these were on my list. Now I had Story Architect a little higher than uh, Fade In. Again, there, it wasn't really ranking them, but just five that I thought were really good. Um, and so based on how do these two rank up against each other? So let's take a look at that today. Now, the important thing whenever we're ranking software, the best one is the one that you're going to use. So if you look at this and go, hey, Story Architect is the best one for me, use that one. Or if, hey, Fade In is the one I really like, use that one. Again, use the one that's comfortable. Use the one that's actually going to help you get the words out of your head and onto the page. So there's gonna be five ways that we're gonna look at Fade In versus Story Architect today. We're gonna to look at the cost, we're gonna look at ease of use, we're also gonna look at the features, we're also gonna look at their mobile platform, because that was one of the trends that I've been really thinking that's gonna start picking up, especially for screenwriting software, is uh, trends in using a mobile devices, so we'll take a look at those. And finally, communication. How do these softwares communicate back to you? Because Final Draft, we all know is horrible <laughs> with getting back to people. I mean, there's a guy on Reddit that sometimes will answer you uh, about your final draft questions, but uh, how do these two uh, softwares compete in terms of communication? So as we go through these different categories, you can look in the description below for timestamps. So you can figure out which category is really important to you because some people price is really important. Other people features is important. So you can go to that particular section of the video if there's something in particular that you're looking for in the matchup between Fade In and Story Architect. Well, let's get started with the price. Well, Fade In comes in at $79.95, and I like what they put underneath it. That's right, that's all. Um, and so the reason why I think this is important is because if there's ever an update for Fade In, you don't have to pay for updates for it at all, unlike stuff like Final Draft. But let's take a look at Story Architect and see what their pricing is. It's because it's a little different. Now, Story Architect has a bunch of different things. Now, both Fade In as well as Story Architect do have a free version. Uh, if we look at the paid version for Story Architect, I wish I had gotten in this a lot earlier. Uh, I could have gotten in when it was 50 bucks, but now lifetime for one price is $120, and that includes all the updates as well too. So it's a little bit more expensive than uh, Fade In, uh, but you can do it monthly if you want. So if you want to try this out for a month, it costs uh, $3.34 monthly in terms of if you do an annual subscription. So what does that come out to? About 40 bucks. So it's cheaper if you just use it for a year and then you're done with it. Uh, but if you want something that lasts a little longer, again, $120, uh, it's still more expensive than Final Draft, but I still think you get good value for it. Uh, some other things that you need to know with this pricing though, uh, to you cloud storage, you have to pay $6.67 per month billed annually. Um, you can save 20% when you buy a pro lifetime. The other thing to understand too is uh, when you're going to use the AI assistance, it does cost credits. And so, so the next one is the AI assistance as we scroll down here, uh, which allows you to use the AI to paraphrase, to supplement the text, to shorten the text, to insert new text between two other paragraphs, to summarize the text, you know, to do that type of stuff. Um, now the price for credits, because you need a credit to do stuff, um, and one credit, they're pretty generous here, equals a thousand words or 10 images processed by AI. Price for credit is 50 credits is for $10, and they give you a deal, 200 credits for $30. Now you do get a certain set amount of credits per month um, in terms of if you have a subscription. So if you have the annual or the lifetime subscription, you get 120 credits. So you get a fair amount of credits for a lifetime membership per month. Again, that's per month. I don't think, I believe they don't roll over. You just get 120 per month. So if we just look at the dollars and cents here, we can see that Fade In has an edge over Story Architect because it's cheaper. But I think the more important thing is what kind of value does each of these different programs bring? Uh, so let's look at the features of each of these two different programs um, because that's gonna tell you the value because just because something is cheaper, if it doesn't give you as much value as the other one, you can say the other one, even though it's more expensive, might be the better program. So let's take a look at the next section, features. Let's start with Fade In again. So as we look at Fade In, uh, as we're looking down the feature page, uh, fully featured application interface, extensive formatting capabilities, autocomplete typing. A lot of this stuff should be in your screenwriting program anyway. Um, so the one thing I'll sort of say about features, Fade In is very much bare bones if you compare it to Story Architect. Story Architect has a lot more features to it than Fade In does. 
However, the thing I really like about Fade In is that it works, and it just works. I mean, that's the nice thing. You can do everything you need to do. It doesn't have a lot of fancy features. It's more like a car that runs really well. It has all the features that you need. Um, it doesn't have a lot of expensive features, you know, like heated seats or a moonroof or something like that. Is it great to have those things? Absolutely. But this works well with the features that it gives you. It's a nice works well screen writing program that once you get going into it it really is just about the writing there's not a lot of bells and whistles with it now if we look at story architect as we go through here you'll see some things that it has that fade in does not so it has mind maps and image gallery character relations extended info dialogue from others from all other stories uh, it's got a location map extended info there a world map extended info it's got a lot of things that fade in doesn't have in terms of sort of figuring out your story if you need if you're one of these people that really needs to think things through so if you're a person who likes to do a lot of planning with your story stark or story architect does a great job of giving you extra tools and i think that's the neat thing about story architect it gives you a lot of additional tools to fade in uh, it also has ai integration which uh fade in does not so when I think of features, one of the other things I was thinking of titling this particular section was innovation as well too. Fade In doesn't have a lot of innovation, but what it does do, it really works well. Now, in terms of Story Architect, they're more into innovation. So if you're wanting something that's continuously growing, continuously evolving, then this is the product for you because that's what they do. Their developers are very much into, okay, what's next? How do we make this better? So if a writer wants something, they're happy to integrate it with it. Fade In, on the other hand, is sort of like, this is what you get for your program. There's gonna probably be not a lot of different add-ons and stuff, but what it does, it does really well. But in terms of features, I have to give this to Story Architect. Our next category is ease of use. Now, the one thing I really like about Fade In in terms of its sort of UI and stuff like that, it's really basic. There's not a lot of jumbling in there. So if you look on along the side, they'll tell you what each of these different icons means, which is really nice. And like I said, it just works. And so it just really is good about writing. I don't feel like there's a lot of clutter on the screen. Uh, and so that's why I really appreciate Fade In. So let's take a look at Story Architect and see how their interface is a little different. Now in comparison to looking at Story Architect, to me the space looks a little bit more cluttered. Everything looks like there's a lot more around my writing, whereas in Fade In, it looked like the writing was sort of the centerpiece here. Uh, I know we can probably adjust, I know we can adjust how each of these things work here so I can actually push in the side so I can create a bigger space here for my writing so I don't see that stuff on the side. Just like fade in, I can click on one of the icons and it tells me what it does. I can look over here. Uh, there's a lot of tools to use. And so there's a lot more functions as we've talked about in the previous section about features and stuff. There's a lot more things you can do with Story Architect. That's why I feel things are a little bit more jumbled. I would think this would be a little harder for beginning screenwriters. This might look a little bit more daunting. So maybe fade in might be what you would like to try if you just want to worry about the writing. However, you like a lot of features, you like to do a lot of different things. Uh, this interface is fine. I think Story Architect is a little bit more cluttered. Still works fine, still really good. Uh, but I think overall, in ease of use, especially for new screenwriters, I'm probably going to give that to fade in. Fourth category we're going to talk about is mobile, because I think, at least from 2024, some of the trends I saw is a lot more people want to write using their phones and stuff like that. And so when I look at Fade In, I've looked at their mobile stuff in the past, and I've not been really impressed with it. Uh, it's gotten a, it's got a, pretty, some, a lot of bad reviews, and I don't think he really was worried about that, because again, his bread and butter is just the uh, desktop program, and, he does, and that's a phenomenal job. I can't tell you how much uh, professional job that is. Uh, now with Story Architect, I just did a video and I'll link that up here in the show notes here, uh, talking about how I think it's one of the best Android apps for 2025. It's free even with the Fade In app on, uh, at least on the Apples. I know it does cost some money, uh, but at least for right now with the Story Architect, it's free. So the problem with a lot of these mobile screenwriting software programs is they don't really link very well to the main program. Um, and so Story Architect has that problem. And I believe if I remember right, Fade In had that problem as well too. Um, I think I'm going to give this to Story Architect though. Their, new app, their app is newer and I was really impressed with it. And I think it's free. If you really want something that works well and it works well on your phone, especially if you have an Android phone, there's not a lot of good Android stuff out there. Take a look at that one and give it a try. So one of the things I just want to throw out there is both these developers are great. I've talked to the person who created Fade In. I also talked to the people at Story Architect at Well too. They always get back to me. They always talk to me. I think they do a phenomenal job, both of them. And I, to be honest, I'd give it a tie. Uh, if if uh, 
if I didn't have to declare a winner. But I think I'm going to go with Faden. He gets back to me a little faster than the people at Story Architect. Again, Story people at, people at Story Architect, great people. Love to talk to them. Have always been really generous. Same with the guy at Faden. I'm going to give it to Faden just simply because he gets back to you a lot quicker than the people at Story Architect. But again, like I said before, the people at Story Architect are great as well too. So it looks like Faden wins three to two. It was really close. And like I said, that last category could really go either way. Both of them are really good at getting back to you. Um, but like I said, I think for new screenwriters, I would sort of lean more towards fade in. Now, if you're more a seasoned writer and one who wants a little bit more um, tools to help with facilitate your writing, then Story Architect might be the way to go. If you like AI integration, Story Architect might, might be the way to go too. So, so like I said, Either of those programs are great programs. You won't be disappointed with either. So what do you think? Do you like Fade In or Story Architect better? If, let me know why in the comment section below. Is there are there two other types of software that you'd like me to sort of battle it out and sort of figure out which one works better uh, between the two? Uh, let me know in the comment sections below. If you like these two screenwriting softwares, you might like a couple of the other ones I've talked about in my top 2025 screenwriting software video.